Brian, I think I once heard you say in an interview that um, science fiction often can deal with political themes, but I think you said at one point that horror films are quite well placed to deal with religious ideas. Um, well, I think that, yeah, I, when, I, when somebody asks me, you know, it's always been interesting to me how you categorize things mm -hmm. and what, what is horror, because that's all, one of the things people often say. What's horror? <laughs> right after they ask, what's your favorite movie? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is horror? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, and I thought, well, you know what? If something's scary, if a movie's scary, it, you could call it a thriller. It's terror. Mm -hmm. But if you add fluids of some sort, yeah. It becomes horror. It can be blood, it can be goo, it can be... Water doesn't quite count, but if you add bodily fluids, yeah. it can be... That makes it horror. You take terror, add fluids, you've got horror. <laughs> if you add metal, you've got sci-fi. <laughs> yes. To be the most absurdly simplistic about it. And with horror and genre movies, there's always this, been this apologetic. The critics always hate them um, because they, you know, there's, there's, you know, in my book, there's always been two roads of cinema. One is Melier and one is the Lumiere. And the Lumiere's theory was the window on the world. Here's the people coming out of the factory. Here is the, the train station. And there is this whole critical theory which says movies should be the window on the world. Mm -hmm. And the more we see how the movie is made, the better it is. We don't want to forget. We want to see it as reality. Then Melies was a magician, had a theater, and what he wanted was to do magic, do, use movies to make magic. Mm -hmm. And this became the sort of the bad movies. So critics have always dumped on the genre movies and lifted the ones that are naturalistic. And it's been a constant, I mean, it's been like that all the way through history. Um, in this country, even though now critics can't afford to be against the public in the US, they've got to like the movies the public likes mm -hmm. or they're out. Um, that's not always been the case, and they still have a. They still try to have an elitist kind of view of what what makes a good movie. The um, the so when a movie is successful, and the critics didn't like it, the traditional critics because it's a genre movie, it's a trash movie. Yeah. Then they, if it gets too successful especially over the long term, then they have to justify why. So let's take the movie that is what that I consider the beginning of the modern age of horror, at least for my life, and that would be Night of the Living Dead. And we see the Night of the Living Dead's influence now in the mainstream with Walking Dead and all these zombie movies. Um, Night of the Living Dead, when I saw it, when it came out, was incredibly scary, incredibly disturbing, mm. very disturbing movie, very scary, a real horror movie. Um, it, was, it has kept being so influential and so, um, and so it was so effective that then when Romero he, you know, came back and did Dawn of the Dead, he just kept doing what he was doing, and he's, you know, it's usually when you try to keep, you know, you know, sequels tend to go to parody quite quickly. You immediately go to comedy. So Dawn of the Dead still had some incredibly disturbing horror scenes in it, but then it also had the, the shoppers, the shopping zombies, and that was funny. And people liked that. And they didn't, I think they, they liked it because, you know, the audience liked it because it was funny. The critics 
explained that, and the critics explained why they might like it or why people, because they said, oh, this is an, a satire. It's a, it's a commentary on consumerist culture. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. George Romero being so successful with Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead, by the time he got to Day of the Dead, he was just a um, uh, cheap movie maker. Now he was a social critic. He was a political filmmaker. And with if you look at Day of the Dead, you'll see that except for the zombie stuff, which is pretty incredible by, um, what's his name, Tom Savini. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the zombie stuff in Day of the Dead is, is quite amazing. But the, but the, um, all the parts of the story and acting seem to be, in my, in my read, they seem self-consciously social commentary. Uh, okay. And then you start, then you kind of go, oh, well, that's what happens. And just as you get older, you tend to start in the movies, you tend to start to want to do other things. So George Romero, I'm just using him, him as an example because, hey, he's probably the, the filmmaker. I mean, certainly have been others that are more successful, but there's been nothing as, as key, I think, as, mm -hmm. as um, Night of the Living Dead. Um, I think that he was, he tried doing other kinds of stuff. He did Night Riders. <laughs> yes. Nothing to do with horror. He did, um, he tried to do the Fun House. He did Martin, which I thought actually was quite good. Yes. Uh, he did, um, but these things weren't working. He had to go back to his hit. And he tried, tried doing other horror. But the problem is that you can't break, you know, just because you had a successful horror movie doesn't mean that you're going to be good at comedy. Or that you're going to be good at drama. Look what look at um, look at um, what's his name of um, of um, Wes Craven. Mm -hmm. He did a nasty little movie, House on the Left. He did a, kind of almost as nasty, The Hills Have Eyes. Yeah. You know, I mean, these were pretty. Mm. They were just going for the let's get the let's get on let's get the audience let's get the grindhouse audience. And by the time he got, by the time he did, um, did um, he tried doing Swamp Thing, and then he did Nightmare on Elm Street. Bang! That became the biggest movie of the of the eighties, I think. It became where all the new effects came, and Freddy is probably the he's the Frankenstein of this. Certainly, my generation. You know, you Leatherface, you got. Freddie and you've got Jason, but come on, Freddie is really, he's got a personality. Yeah. Right? And, but Wes Craven just, you know, he didn't want to be, he was a real, he's a, I think he was a real horror fan because I, back then I had had dinner with him and stuff at right. festivals and he certainly wasn't, he's certainly not a guy who was just doing a horror movie because you know, the way a lot of people do today is they do it because they think this is the way into the movies. Mm -hmm. You do a horror movie. And you can feel it with their movie. But Wes Craven still had to try to get, he tried doing that violin movie. He, tried, he just wanted to do something respectable. And all he had was lots and lots and lots of money. <laughs> you know? But you can't just because you want to go out, you know. Um, but anyway, I think that this idea that you make a political movie, like People Under the Stairs, seems to me that was overtly political. Right. There's a lot of scenes in it that you could see the filmmaker wanting to show that he wasn't just doing a horror movie because by that time doing a horror movie wasn't enough. It didn't get him off enough, you know. And so that's, you know, with me, I have a, I, I think... On the, I think in, in one way, I've made too many movies that didn't work. <laughs> so I, I'm still trying to make a couple good ones. <laughs> so I've never had to deal with that. <laughs>
you know, if I had made a few real, obviously, Reanimator's a classic. I produced it. You know, you want to try to redo it. Um, society has had some, it's been reborn. It's yeah. been re rediscovered. But luckily, now that it's so much older and it's from another time, people kind of, they forgive or just, they just interpret the clumsy parts of that movie as being, wow, it's so 80s. <laughs> well, actually, it's kind of like when you watch a Japanese horror movie or something, mm. you go, why would she do that? Oh, it's their culture. You go, no, it's not. It's really stupid, okay? <laughs> but forgive it, because it's in their culture. Mm. And I think, and so I think a lot of the, you know, I still, I would still like to make a couple of good horror movies. <laughs> I'm not that interested in making that violin movie or the, mm. or the political movie, although you would say that society is a political movie, mm. but I, it, I don't know. I don't quite see it that way. I, it was, I saw it as like kind of another type of alien movie, yeah. but alien is political, so you're back into it. Anyway, the point I'm making is when people talk about politics, and I'm always dealing with people that I'm producing or I'm working with somebody and they start talking about what the what the allegory is that this horror movie is and I always try to fight against that right. I say just don't of course it's going to reflect the world we're in don't do it consciously and oh they want to make a political point and I'm kind of like you know what leave that for sci-fi because sci-fi does naturally deal with politics naturally. Sci-fi is like that. It's about what's going to happen in the future. 